Hi everyone and welcome again back to the Homesteading Kitchen. Today we are processing kidney beans for the pantry. Now we don't use a lot of kidney beans in our cooking, but we've got a couple people in this house that really like a winter, cold day, fall day full of chili in the crock pot. And the best way to do that is to have the ingredients on hand because it seems like that is the one thing that I always have to run to the store and get. Now we missed a rainy day yesterday, the day before, and we were doing a lot of canning already, so there was no time to make that chili. And if I had had it here, it would have made dinner planning on top of canning so much easier because I could have set up that crock pot, set it aside for the day, and moved on to my canning. So we're starting with four one pound bags of light red kidney beans. You can use any kidney bean you like, but I find that is the most readily available in my area. The cheapest place I found them was Walmart for a little over a dollar a bag, and it was like $2.19 at Meyer. So for about half the savings, I went to a store that I might not normally go to, and I, after I left that Walmart store, I noticed there was an Aldi's across the street. Those discount type grocery stores, you may be able to get those beans um, dried peas, lentils, way cheaper than you can at a normal uh, chain store. So keep your eye out for that because that is additional money savings that can really help the family budget. So I'm starting with this light red kidney bean, like I said, great value, one pound, and it takes about a cup per quart. Now I am canning today in quart sized jars because the other day I was doing pints and a thing to note about doing that is, like these are my black beans that I did this week. Um, these have all cooled for 24 hours. You have to take the bands off, label them, and get them put in the pantry. I only use one pint for my recipe. Now when I store buy kidney beans, I usually need two or three, sometimes even four cans of beans. So these little lids can really add up a lot. So you want to use as few of them as possible. So by doing quart size jars, you're going to use less. Here, we're pre-soaking. I didn't think I was going to can today because it's supposed to be about 80. But I've got the time to can and I can have the doors open, not running the air conditioning. I don't like to run the air conditioning during canning because that cold draft can actually hit a hot jar and make it crack. So you can soak these overnight for 12 to 18 hours, or you can fill up your pot, cover your beans with water, do a little more than just covering because they're gonna absorb some of that water and they're going to expand. And you wanna make sure that they are still immersed in the water. So definitely a double layer higher than what your beans are or more. Not too much, because we don't wanna waste the energy of heating excess water. And it's all gonna get drained off anyway and reused in the garden. So we're gonna bring this up to a boil for two minutes, then we're gonna put the lid on it and let it soak for an hour. So use that hour time to get your kitchen set up and get other things ready that you need. I've got my seven mason jars ready to go and we are getting the canner ready at this point. So my canner instructions, I have a Presto canner, all in good working condition. You wanna make sure your seals and gaskets are working really well. You can see here, just using regular tap water, this is non-chlorinated well water. When you are doing a lot of canning, it really suggests to use non-chlorinated water. Um, we do cheese making, and that definitely says non-chlorinated water. All right, now I like to warm up my jars either in the sink or right here in the canner and you can see they like to fall over a little bit when there's not a full canner so i always try to make sure that i have enough full jars and empty jars because that really goes a long way in that really goes a long way in aiding you because you see they start getting knocked over and when your hands are full of hot things you don't want an accident to happen so this is going to sit until these are ready. We won't need that for quite some time now because after this, these are going to get rinsed, add new water, and cook for a half an hour. So the timer just went off and see that these beans are not underwater. It soaked up all the water and 
we are just barely underwater with what I did. So this was about one part beans, three parts water. And when I had done a batch of beans before, with the smaller beans, I did eight cups of water. There's no way this would have been covered with eight cups of water. So I'm real happy with this. We're going to drain this off in um, to a bucket or the sink. I like to reuse this in the garden as it cools or to give these starches to the chickens later on because they will benefit from that. Okay, so we want to give these beans a quick rinse just until the water runs clear off of them. That is flushing away all of the very fibrous, starchy substances that are going to cloud up your jars anyway. And a lot of that is uh, stomach distress gas causing. So definitely a good step to follow through with. So we're going to put these back in the pot and we're going to bring that up to a boil for 30 minutes. So you can see the beans are back in the pot Plenty of extra water for cooking in because we're going to be boiling this for a much longer time. Again, maybe three to four parts water and one part beans. The beans are swollen. They're going to maybe take on some more water. This is also a good time to add any seasoning. You could add a few of these um, instant bouillon cubes or the granules at this point, and that's going to help flavor your beans for a hearty dish. This works really good for mixing in your beans with something like rice to add a little extra flavor. I usually do that with the cooking of the rice or stews and, and whatnot. So we are again doing just water. Some people like to add salt. We like a low sodium diet, so we're leaving that out. Now that being said, the water in this pot is also your liquid for your canning process. That's why we mention that at this point, because if you want a flavored uh, juice or brine, anything like that, you can add it right to this, or you could make that in a separate pot as well, because some people want to, again, um, discard any of this liquid to help reduce any of the extra starches. Uh, entirely up to you, but not necessary. This is the good time. Like I said, this is a 30 minute boil once this gets up to a boil. I like to set my timer for 20 minutes because at the 20 minute mark, after that's boiling, I'm going to put my canner um, on the stove and start getting that warmed up. Or you can um, run your jars uh, through the hot sink, boiling water, anything like that, because you need to be filling hot jars. So I'm going to get my bands and my lids um, ready for a scald. Again, you don't really want to boil your lids with that rubber gasket because that can help break down that rubber. We just want to scald them to make sure that they are hot, clean, and sanitary. Okay, so our time has gone by, and during that time, we used our own time to get things ready for canning and to bake a batch of chocolate chip cookies so that we can keep snacking and have the energy to keep going today. We have our jar lifter. We have our magnetic. Uh, this is for your lids and bands. It picks them up. A funnel for the jars and a measuring cup for filling with liquid. Now I like to fill with, uh, like I have a big strainer that I scoop my beans out first. I have to grab that and set the jars up here. I want those jars staying hot. So I left my jars here. I just got this warm and I'm going to pull those as soon as we're ready to start filling. In the meantime, I've poured scalding water over my bands and lids, so those are sitting sanitized, sterilized, and ready to go. Now a little trick is to add a splash of vinegar, and give or take a couple of tablespoons. I just pour it in. I'm just using regular white distilled vinegar. If you don't have it on hand, you could certainly use apple cider vinegar as well. That's gonna help keep your jars clean and clear so they're going to look real nice like this instead of getting a cloudy film on them or a line from your water um, lime and scale buildups. So here you can see I'm just using my little strainer so that I'm not getting um, an uneven amount of liquid and beans together. If you just ladle that, you're going to be getting like 50% liquid in your scoop and end up with less beans. And I want a full quart of beans. Now you can see I'm filling my beans up to about the shoulder 
um, before the neck of the jar and I will be topping it off with the liquid. That's going to give me a good amount of beans for our chili. These are again light kidney beans that I am going to be using all winter long to fill our crock pot. So we're just going to keep doing the same thing here between all the jars. That one's a little full. I'll actually scoop some of those off and put them uh, in the next jar. And it's looking like with my four bags, I might be lucky to get seven jars full. Now when my pot gets low and it's getting hard to find the beans, I don't want to mush those beans. So I'm starting to pull liquid off of the jar or off of the pot to fill the jars. And you want to leave an inch head space. If you don't leave enough head space, and that's right about to this band or just below, uh, you will have leakage or siphoning in your canner that will actually pull some of that liquid out under pressure and end up in your water uh, so you know I got a bunch of beans, so I'll go ahead and pour it in that one. So we want to keep that canning water clean and clear and get a proper seal on these. So if you have too much siphoning, sometimes your jars won't seal. Looking really good. Those cookies in the background are looking just irresistible right now made sure to have a good breakfast because these projects you'd be surprised how much time you end up putting into it but it's a good sneak in sort of thing where you've got a couple of hours time and we've already got an hour into the cooking and 45 minutes into um, prepping and soaking so a few hours time just you know it's Saturday I'm not going out anywhere. Our area is very busy um, commercially with people out shopping. So I tend to set that out and do things at home. Okay, so now all of our jars have been filled, topped with liquid to within an inch. And now the hot lids and bands are going on. So the canner already has hot water in that. You want to make sure that if you heat your jars any other method um, than what I did today, that your water in that canner is hot because the temperature difference would crack your jars. And that's always sad to do. Um, if you saw some of my jars, I use my mom's old jars. I use new jars. So I have got uh, square jars, rounded jars, absolutely new ball jars, and sometimes it can be tricky. Now this is one of those gold bands that's a little bit off brand, and they like to not go on real good. So if I catch one of those, a lot of times I set it aside, and that can get used for like a crafting project or just discarded. Um, both my mother and mother-in-law canned, and I have a lot of lids and bands from my mother-in-law that were Kerr brand, and they don't seem to go on well. Okay, now we're even. So you can see six jars fit in the canner nicely also, but I definitely have room for seven. Like I said, some of those vintage jars can be a little tricky getting seven in there so I always test the jars I'm going to use first for a fit. Now you can see you've got lugs here and right there I wanted to show that there's a locking pin right here that's going to catch that it's going to go under that lip so you want to make sure that you're all lined up properly. This isn't going to go on correctly if you don't have it lined up. Now there's a little notch here that says close and open and it lines up with this little raised plastic mold in the handle and this canner has already been used this season so we know all our seals are good we've been using it this week so we've got this temperature on the burner turned up to about number seven seven and a half right now and what's going on back here is it's very hot 
and we're going to let this build pressure. Now, as it builds pressure, right now it's showing that there's no pressure indicator um, indication right here. That, that's what this is, your pressure indicator. Um, our weight goes here later on, and that's what this is. And it starts rocking at about 13 to 15 um, PSI. Your recipe uh, is from like the USDA uh, website on canning dried beans. That's what I'm using today. They're standardized for a thousand feet, like I have previously said in other videos. And for our area, you can punch in on the internet your actual address or your town to know what uh, PSI you're supposed to be doing your canning at. So I'm at 10, so right about 10, and it's not easy to keep it steady at one uh, setting. So this is a Presto canner. I also got a Miro canner, and they work both equally well. This one, however, has the actual dial gauge for me to look at, and I like that because I can actually know, not just from sound, from looking at my gauge. So sometimes it creeps up there to 15 and I just turn that temperature down a little bit to help conserve some of the energy um, not doing that. I'd said in a previous video that I was doing about energy savings and the high rates kicking in at three o'clock. That is not so on the weekend. So this day being Saturday, I can can all day long and it's not gonna make a difference. There is no peak charge um, for me using my electric stove. So you can just hear, when this gets to be a white steady stream, set the timer for 10 minutes and we're going to let that vent. You don't want to go beyond that too long because what's happening is you're losing steam from your water inside of your canner and that's what's going to create the pressure. So this is going to come up letting us know that it is um, gaining pressure and it can come up before the weight is on. So I'm just gonna sit and have my little snack and we're gonna watch that vent. Now, as this is heating up, you can hear that water really boiling and taking off. If you look here, you can see that steam going up. It can be tricky to see looking straight on this way because as you can see with the white appliances it's a little harder to see while i was waiting for that to get going i washed up all of the canning supplies so we're full on another second or third load of dishes today i don't use the dishwasher much because of that because it's just a lot of constant repetitive quick washing there's no reason to run that dishwasher for so long now you can see here we're getting a little bit of water build up there it goes so even though that pressure wiggler isn't on there, the whole thing can pressurize. So that is gonna be fully venting from right there right now. And your pressure gauge will stay right, right there, just at zero to almost one. Now that's gonna get a real steady stream on it. There we go. So I think we can go ahead and set that timer now for 10. So as soon as that timer goes off, we'll put the jiggler on it or the weight. There's a lot of numbers in canning and I'm sure I misspoke earlier in the video. When I cooked my beans, I cooked them for 30 minutes and I'm sure I probably said an hour. It was an hour soak, 30 minutes cooking. So keep that in mind and I'll put a little note back in that part of the video when I am doing my editing as well. So this canner is going to sit here as soon as that weight goes on for 90 minutes for my quarts. If you were doing pints, you would be doing 75 minutes with um, the pressure or the weight on it from that moment. So come on back. Oh, in a little while, we'll put this weight on and we'll reset the timer. If you ever have trouble with your lid or excessive sweating here, get yourself a rebuild kit or a lid kit. Some of these um, lid gaskets don't come with anything else. Mine particularly was replaced just recently. Um, I went to a hardware store in a small town 
They call it Do It Hardware. Um, Ace has them, True Value. Different models have a different kit, so you need to know your model number from the bottom um, of your pot. It's probably etched into that. And like for me, it came with the lid gasket, it came with a gasket for in the weight, and your overpressure plug also. Um, if that overpressure plug ever blows for some reason, you have to replace it. You can't reuse it anyway. Okay, so now we're going for 90 minutes and I can actually get off my legs for the first time today. A note about that is if you're doing this a lot, get yourself some like Keds or K-Swiss tennis shoes, real light, thin. We don't wear shoes in the house and my legs really hurt at the end of the day of doing a lot of canning. And that really makes a difference. Just have a little bit something on the soles of your feet. The nice thing about the jiggler or the weight, I could hear that rocking and swishing. So I immediately knew that I was over pressure and that I was up to 15 and I want mine at 10. So I just come over, turn that dial down, conserve the energy. I forgot to sit within view of my dial to watch it to get to 10 to turn it down. Like I said, I had it at about seven and a half. For me, once this really gets going and I've got a st steady temperature, I can keep it between low and three, sometimes four. But if I put it as high as four, sometimes I'm kind of turning it down a little bit. So we'll just let that creep back down. It's okay that it's over. We just don't want it under. So see, now we're back down to 10. Everything is calm and quiet once more. It just took a minute, oh, four and we're good. So your indicator here, you're off pressure, you're at zero, you can go ahead and take the weight off and we can open up the pot and pull the jars out. Putting the jars on either a wood, like butcher block, cutting board, or a towel. Even with the wood board, I like to put a towel on them anyway because they're coming out wet. Okay, so now we are going to let these set out in a draft-free area. No ceiling fan running, no air conditioner blowing on them. And you should let them cool and be undisturbed for 24 hours. So tomorrow I will come back. Most likely I'll check on them in the morning. It's already getting to be evening now. And... I'll pull the bands off to check to make sure that the jars have sealed. And sometimes you can hear the popping noise. That's normal. That's the jar sealing as it's cooling. A lot of times it's already sealed in the pressure canner. It's a little bit different than with a water bath canner. So we will make sure that they're all sealed with the bands off. Put labels on them. Now some people like to store them in the basement or in your pantry with the bands off. I like to leave them on loosely. The reason for that being is if you have a false seal, which I give them a good tug, I know they're sealed, um, that loose lid here, not the band, is going to tell you that this is bad. Always check sample, smell, um, your product before using it. Check for discoloration or odd odors and dispose of anything um, that may not be good and food safe. If you've done everything correctly, there won't be any errors. And if there ever is, um, you want to catch it like before you're consuming it or mixed it in. I've actually grabbed some tomatoes at one point even last year that the jars didn't seal started to pour it in my crock pot because I forgot to check it and immediately noticed an order odor. I had to get rid of everything in that crock pot because I knew it wasn't safe to eat. And there was no way I was gonna skim off any juice or tomatoes off of the rest of the pile of the food in the crock pot. So it was all a waste. So in running the pantry good, this was a good use of my time. It's not a lot of money. It is about a six times saving of having dried beans over store-bought small canned beans. So our family budget um, depends on this kind of stuff. Cut the corners wherever you can 
and to be able to have this at home instead of running out to the store because that's where it really gets you at that three four dollar a gallon price and this week it's four dollars a gallon so I'm gonna be staying home today and not running out in the rat race because my pantry is getting stocked right here with dry goods that I picked up during the week when I was already out knowing that this was coming we're going into a hot spell and I'm gonna be taking a break from this because we're gonna be doing other things. So watch those playlists. Check out our farming videos this week because that's where we're gonna be. And we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.